good for anything but firewood now. That used to be a fence. But Cousin Stanley changed all that. He almost changed a few other things, too. Before I carry this out to the backyard, suppose I sit down and rest a while and tell you about it. A couple of weeks ago, our new next-door neighbor, Earl Miller, built a fence between our homes. Good evening, Mr. Fisher. Oh, that's quite a job, Mr. Miller. That ought to keep Duke out of trouble. Hey, what kind of a dog is this Duke of yours? Boxer. He's won a couple of blue ribbons. We're getting him ready to show next month. Oh, must be quite a dog, huh? He is. Hi, Dad. Hello, Hi. Hi, Freddy. The dog here yet, Mr. Miller? Not yet, Freddy. We're bringing him home from the kennel tonight. I sure want to see him. Well, you and Duke will have to get acquainted. Hello, Mr. Fisher. Oh, good evening, Miss Miller. Well, how do you like the fence? No, I don't think your dog will get over that. I Probably. hope not. Where we lived before, he always got out of the yard and tore up the garden next door. For some strange reason, our neighbor never appreciated Duke. <laughs> <laughs> I understand from Mrs. Fisher that you're expecting company. Yes, my cousin, Stanley. We haven't seen him for five years. Oh, how nice. He's a salesman. Travels all over. He sent me this for Christmas. Oh. Say. Don't start whittling on my new fence, will you, Freddy? <laughs> no, I not. This whole dish of corn is going to have a great grandpa. Oh, it looks good. I'm hungry this morning. Freddy, will you say grace? Dear God, bless this food to our youth this morning. And bless Mom and Dad and everybody. And Cousin Stanley. In Jesus' name. Amen. I wonder what happened to Stanley. He should have arrived by now. Well, he might have gotten behind on his schedule. That can happen on the road. I wonder if he's changed much. What's he really like? I, I don't remember him very well. Oh, cheerful, happy-go-lucky, typical traveling man. The funny thing about Stanley, he's so carefree most of the time, yet when he gets his damned her up. Oh, boy. Remember how mad he was at the butcher that time? Oh, oh, he's a good artist, Solo. Too bad he never married. Why didn't he, Dad? Well, I just don't know. I'll ask him. Why don't you? <laughs> Cousin Stanley! Yes, why not? Come on, my dear. Well, we may as well go, too. Do you think he'd like to go out to the ballpark? Well, well maybe. He's had breakfast yet. So. Well, if I know Stanley, he'd always eat a second breakfast. Oh, 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 get out of here! Oh, 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 I got bit. Do bit me. Let's see. Peter, you all right, Anna? Well, it doesn't look bad. We'd better clean it out. Anna, you take care of it. Peter, get the first aid kit. Yes, Gramps. Come on, you ready. Come on. What happened, Stanley? Well, I guess it's my fault. I was a little tired from driving all night, and I didn't see that fence over there. It's new, isn't it? Yes, our neighbor just put it up. Well, I just caught the corner post and knocked some of the fence down. The next thing I saw, Freddy was running out towards my car. The big dog jumped through the hole in the fence and grabbed him. I jumped out and kicked at the dog, but he ran down the street. Stanley, when you make an arrival, you really make a good one, don't you? Well, this is one I could do without. <laughs> well, incidentally, how are you? Well, I was all right up to a few minutes ago. Glad to see you again, Stanley. Nice to see you, Grandpa. Hey, what goes on here? Oh, Mr. Miller. Uh, this is my cousin, Stanley Fisher. Mr. Miller? Glad to know you, Mr. Miller. Seems you've met my fence already. Uh, Mr. Miller, I'm afraid in all the excitement your dog got out. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, and I'll have your fence fixed right away. Oh, I'm not so much concerned about the fence as I am about losing the dog. Oh, he'll come back. I'm so sure about that. This is the first day he's been here. With a scare like that, he may keep right on going. I'll get you another dog. I'm afraid you don't understand. Duke's a valuable show dog. Well, Mr. Miller, he just ran away. and Give him a chance to come back. Sure, we'll help you look for your dog, but right now I'm more concerned about Freddy. Freddy? What's he got to do with it? Your dog bit him. Duke bit Freddy? I'm afraid he did. Yes, when Freddy ran out to see Stanley, I guess Duke thought that Freddy was after him. I hope it's not serious. Well, I don't think so, but we we better have a doctor look at him. And don't worry about your dog. He'll be back before the day's over. Well, I hope so. As I said before, he's a valuable animal. If I don't get this fence fixed right away, I'll have to take him back to the kennel. Let me know how Freddy gets along. The way that guy's acting, you'd think I knocked his fence oh, down on purpose. Well, Stanley, we were just sitting down to breakfast. 
How about joining us? Well, I did eat earlier on the road, but <laughs> we know you can always stand another breakfast. <laughs> Grandpa, I'm going to have to get after you and Carl. You don't handle enough of my products. Well, you don't call on us often enough. <laughs> that's the answer. Say, that's a beauty, isn't it? Sure. I don't believe we had this new soda fountain the last time you were here. No. Well, you remind me to wrestle you up one of my special Sundays. I'm getting good at it. Grandpa, that's an offer you don't have to make twice. I'll do it. Oh, hello, Carl. What did Dr. Bergen say? Well, the wound isn't too bad, but we should find the dog. Check for rabies. Say, that never occurred to me. Is there any danger of that? Yeah, it's always possible. Well, what if the dog doesn't come back? We'll have to give him the pasture treatment just to be safe. Well, why not give it to Freddy anyway? No, they don't like to do it unless it's necessary. It's rather lengthy and painful. He'd have to have a shot every day for at least two weeks. Well, frankly, I was hoping his dog wouldn't come back, but now... If that dog doesn't show up, we'll all have to start looking for it. When I dropped Freddy off, I saw Miller, and he's still plenty burned up. Well, I can't say that I blame him. Well, I suppose I'll have to do something about fixing his fence. But frankly, from the way he's acting, maybe I ought to let him fix it himself. No, no, no. We'll have to overlook his attitude. After all, his new fence was knocked down, and he did lose his dog. But Carl... Uh, Stanley, let me whip you up one of my special banana splits. <laughs> Say, that's something I'd rather talk about. You know, this concoction is becoming known as the Grandfather Fisher Special. And it is a special. <laughs> Oh, boy, wait till you see this. And there you are, Anna. All ready to garnish a roast. Pretty simple, isn't it? My, that is handy, <laughs> isn't it? Well, I brought a couple of them along for you. And you can't tell. Emily might need one one of these days. <laughs> you never can tell. <laughs> well, look, as long as I'm in this rig, isn't there something I can do to help with dinner? Thanks, Stanley. We can manage. You go in and keep Grandpa company. Well, when does Carl get home? He'll sure be glad to hear the news. Well, he'll be here any minute now. Now, look, ladies, you try our little gadgets. Good for French fried potatoes, carrots for creaming, beets for pickling, and cucumbers for cucumber salads. And if you like it and want a gross of them, I can get it for you wholesale. Oh, I forgot. I'm hungry. <laughs> Grandpa, finished with the sports section? Yeah, here you are. Yeah, thanks. Wonder how the Yanks did. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello, Carl. Carl, I've got great news for you. You don't have to worry about Miller anymore. What do you mean? Well, I was looking around the yard, and you know what? The fence is on your property. Well, how do you know? Well, I found the survey stake and lined it up with the back one, and that fence is at least six inches on your property. Stanley showed it to me, Carl. I guess he's right. You know, I thought it went right along the side of the flower bed. That's what I told him. The survey stake can't be wrong. Well, what difference does it make? Well, this changes the whole affair. Now you can sue Miller. Sue him? What for? For building the fence on your property. Then he can't sue us for knocking his fence down or the loss of his dog. But Stanley, Mr. Miller did get his new fence knocked down. If it had been where it should have been, I probably wouldn't have hit it in the first place. Besides, it's legally your fence. You can sue him. Why should I? He's our neighbor. I hope he'll become our friend. Carl's right. What did we gain by suing Earl Miller? Oh, I don't get you guys. Well, you got Miller right where you want him. Where do we want him, Stanley? Okay, Carl. That's the way you feel about it. But believe me, he won't sue me and get away with it. Dinner's ready. Dinner? Oh, boy, Anna, am I hungry. When are you going to fix that fence of mine? Your fence? Who says it's your fence? I do. <laughs> it just happens to be six inches on Carl's property. 
Now, look, what are you trying to pull? I'm not trying to pull anything. I just found the survey stake and lined it up with the back one, and it's plain to see the fence is on Carl's property. I don't understand. Carl told me this flower bed was the property line. I don't care what Carl said. There's the survey stake. Do I understand by your attitude that you don't intend to fix the fence? You understand correctly. If you'd been decent about it... What do you expect me to do? Pat you on the back for knocking down the fence and losing my dog? Look, before I'm through with you, you'll be fixing Carl's fence. Oh, is that so? Now, let me tell you something. You'll be paying for that dog of mine, or I'll have the law after you. Yeah? Well, do you realize Freddy's gonna take the pasture treatment? Because that flea-bitten mongrel of yours probably has rabies. Flea-bitten mongrel? That's what I said, flea-bitten Why, mongrel! Stanley, you have said grandpa, enough. Grandpa. I said that's enough. Oh, I'm awfully oh, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Miller. Nobody's gonna talk to me like that. Now, you come on back in the house. Oh, this is terrible. When Carl gets home, he'll talk to you. He can talk to my lawyer. Hi, Grant. Hello, Peter. Carl, I'm afraid we've got trouble. What do you mean? Well, Stanley and Earl Miller almost came to blows this morning. Oh, no. Yes. Stanley told him about the fence being on your property, and they got into quite an argument. In fact, Anna and I had to break it up. What is the matter with Stanley? I don't know. But the last thing Miller said to Anna was that from now on, you could talk with his lawyer. Sounds like it's getting really serious. Oh, it's getting ridiculous. I'm going to talk to Miller tonight and get this straightened out. Well, it looks to me like you'd better talk to Stanley also. The Millers have decided that Stanley's attitude is our attitude. Fisher's Drugstore. Oh, yes, Anna. Yes, Gramp was just telling me. Dr. Bergen? Yes. Okay. Mm hmm Because they haven't found the dog, Dr. Bergen thinks we'd better start the Pasteur treatments. Do they have to? Yes, just to be safe. So if you two will look after things, I'll get Freddy over to the doctor. Sure, you go right ahead, Carl. You want your coat, Gramp? Yes, my white coat. Thanks. When Dr. Bergen stuck me with that big needle, I didn't even cry. Did I, Dad? No, you didn't. <laughs> you were a very good soldier. How long will he have to take these shots? Every day for two weeks, unless the dog is found and is all right. I think it's an outrage. If it was me, That's I'd do... That's you, Stanley. I don't like to speak bluntly. As I understand it, you've only been making matters worse. But I'm only trying to help. I know, I know. But from now on, let me handle it, will you? but you'd let him walk all over you. The situation has gone far enough. Mr. Miller ought to be home right now. I'm going over and see him. Don't be silly. Let him come to you. It puts you in a better position. Stanley, I'm not concerned with positions. I'm only concerned with what's right. And so far, we've been pretty wrong. Emily? I don't understand that father of yours. Well, guess I'll get something to eat. Oh, good evening, Miss Miller. Is your husband home? No, he's not. Do you expect him soon? I don't know. Well, I wanted to see him, and I wanted to see if we couldn't straighten out this mess about the fence. I think it's gone far enough. Yes, it certainly has. That's why Earl's talking to his lawyer right now. But there's no need for anything like that. Well, Earl thinks there is. And he's also hired a surveyor to come out tomorrow to check that property line. But Mrs. Miller, that is not necessary. That's why I want to talk to him. Earl said he's through talking. That's why he's turning it all over to his lawyer. I see. Uh, when he comes in, would you ask him to call me? I'll tell him. I thought you were working. I am, Carl. For you. From now on, you've got nothing to worry about. Now, what have you done? Well, since you won't look out for yourself, I've just had a long talk with the branch office lawyer, and we're a cinch. Hey, Carl. Why don't you buy this stuff from me? I could save you some money. What are you talking about? This cream. I don't mean the cream. I mean the lawyer. Oh, the lawyer. 
Well, the lawyer said we can sue Miller for the dog biting Freddy. For the cost of medical expenses, for trespassing, we can make him move the whole fence off the property, and we can even sue him for punitive damage. Miller hasn't got a chance. Stanley, I told you before how I feel about this. I'm not going to sue Miller for anything, and neither are you. But why not? In the first place, he didn't understand that he was building in our property. I told him where to put it. In the second place, the dog would never have bitten Freddy if the fence hadn't been knocked down. But, Carl, the law's on your side. You don't seem to understand. I don't want to win a lawsuit. I want to win Miller's friendship. And frankly, you're not making it very easy for me to do that. Me? Well, I'm just trying to keep him from walking all over you. Carl, I just came from home. You know what? Miller has a surveyor checking the property line. Uh -huh. You see, Carl? You've got to fight. And if you won't, I will. No, you won't, Stanley. For the last time, let me handle this my own way. You know, Grandpa, I don't understand Carl. Here, I got an airtight case and he won't fight. Carl's fighting for something bigger than a broken fence. Well, I better run along. It's time to eat. And I got a dinner date with a customer. Why don't you try to finish your soup, Freddy? I can, Emily. Be awfully good for you. I'm not hungry. <laughs> All right. How's the patient? Oh, he's just having a slight reaction from that shot. Oh, I'll be okay. Ah, uh, sure you will. I uh, want something for you, Freddy. Here, catch. Gee, thanks, cousin Stanley. Boy, when I see Freddy like this, Stanley, I. Stanley, let's not talk about it up here. Freddy, is there anything else you want? No, thanks, Emily. Well, I'll be downstairs. You just call me if there is. Okay. Yeah, don't you worry, Freddy. We'll find that big dog yet. And you won't have to take any more shots. Where's your dad and grandpa? Oh, they're still down at the store. You had your dinner yet? Yeah, I ate with a customer. You know, when I see Freddy up there, it makes me boil. You know, Stanley, you're making it awfully difficult for us to act the way we should. Now you're talking like your father. But you just don't understand our attitude. But look at Freddy up there. I know, and we're all very concerned about him, but we don't have to show our concern by hating the Millers. Ah, uh, that love thy neighbor stuff can go too far, especially when it costs money. Stanley, there are some things you just can't put a price tag on. Look, all Miller's interested in is getting his fence and his dog paid for, and we're the ones that are going to have to do it unless we stop it. Stanley, I hate to say this, but... Have you ever stopped to think that maybe it's your attitude that's making Mr. Miller act the way he does? What have I done? Oh, hello, Mr. Miller. Is your father in, Miss Fisher? No, he isn't, but we expect him any minute. Won't you come in? Thank you. Mr. Miller, it's good to see you. I wanted to talk to your husband about the fence and about the dog. Has you been found? Yes. He turned up at our old place. Some neighbors got in touch with me. He's down at the veterinarians now. That's wonderful. Is the dog all right? I mean about the rabies. Well, he looks all right. But the doctor thinks Freddie better continue with the treatments a couple of days more until they're sure the dog doesn't have rabies. I'm sorry, Mrs. Fisher, about the boy. Thank you. Carl will be happy to hear you found the dog. I uh, hear you've been surveying the property and you hired a lawyer. That's right. Well, I got a lawyer too. And from what he says, you're in trouble. If you think you can threaten me... I'm not threatening you, I'm telling you. What is going on here? If you people think you're going to sue me, you've got another thing coming. Eh, you're just saying that because you know you haven't got a chance. Stanley, you've said altogether too much. But Carl, I... Not nothing. Sit down and keep quiet. Earl, I never had any intention of suing you. But your cousin said... I don't care what he said. I know how he feels about this affair. I'd like you to know how we feel. We're extremely sorry about the whole thing. We don't blame you in the slightest for what happened to Freddy. We're very sorry that you lost your dog. But, Dad, the dog's been found. He's at the veterinarians now. Oh, good. I don't understand. What about the fence? We'll fix it. That's not what I mean. I came over to tell you that the survey showed that you're right. The fence is on your property. Ha-ha! <laughs> you see, I told you so! Stanley, please.
girl, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter in the slightest whether the fence is 10 inches one way or the other. Carl, I, I don't know what to say. Frankly, your, your changed attitude has got me a little baffled. My attitude hasn't changed. I just haven't had an opportunity to express it. I came over to your house last evening, but you weren't home. Well, I came over expecting no cooperation, knowing I was legally in the wrong in this thing, but... Well, we've gotten off to rather a bad start. I'd like to do anything I can to straighten it out. That's right, Earl. After all, we're neighbors. This is just one of those things, not really anybody's fault. Well, that's very generous of you. You know, I've been worried most about my dog biting Freddy. And I'd like to at least pay for Freddy's medical care. Forget it. It doesn't amount to much. Well... Then at least you forget about repairing the fence. I'll do it myself Saturday. I'll help you. We'll fix it together. Sure, we'll all fix you. After all, you know, it's your fence, but it's on our property, so we've all got to see that it's kept up, don't we? <laughs> Carl, I guess I was a little hasty in some of my opinions about you and your family. Forget it. We'll all be out there Saturday to help you fix the fence. <laughs> I guess the first thing I better do is fire my lawyer. <laughs> Good night. Bye. I don't get it. You had him right where you wanted him. You could have thrown the book at him. That's exactly what I did. What do you mean? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Stanley, I know a lot of people would agree with what you wanted to do. And we might have won a few dollars in the court action. But what else would we have won? Probably a lifelong enemy living next door to us who, when he fixed his fence, would perhaps have added a couple of feet on top just to spite us. You think it would have been worth it? Maybe not. If a man really believes what the Bible says about his sins, about Jesus as his savior, then he just has to be a different sort of person. I admit the way you handled it is uh, different at least different than the way I'd have settled it. Maybe the difference comes from the book we follow. I guess I really messed things up, didn't I? You know, I've always believed there was a place for what you call the Christian way of doing things. But I've always felt there were times when perhaps you had to take things into your own hands or the other fellow take advantage of it. Yes, I suppose they do take advantage of us sometimes. But we shouldn't be too concerned about that, should we? You see, Stanley, living like a Christian family means acting in all things the way we believe Christ would want us to act, even including such things as a broken fence or a dog bite. However you want to explain it, I see your system works. It's not my system, Stanley. Well, anyway, you won your case, and you didn't have to go to court. Yes, the fence is fixed. The dog is all right, so Freddy doesn't have to take any more shots. It'll paint, and it'll be almost as good as new. And you know who's down buying the paint? That's right, Stanley. Oh, hello there. It was awfully nice of you to invite us into your living room. Or should I have said it was awfully nice of you to have spent the last few moments in our living room? Anyway, I, I would like to add just a few words. A word about the kind of life concerning which we members of the Fisher family say, this is the life. You see, the kind of life we're trying to preserve is a life based on a personal faith in Jesus Christ as our Savior. A life blessed with the joy and the peace and the assurance that only a faith in Christ the Son of God can give you. And that's why we so sincerely hope that whoever you are, wherever you are, that you will invite the Son of God into your hearts and your homes, that you will cherish him as your personal redeemer, and that you will make his word, the Bible, a lamp under your feet and a light under your path. Because we're very sure that if you will, you will find that 
This is the life.